And this glacier is called Breda Merkuljökull, and it's a glacier tongue of 21, 21 kilometers long, which is connected to the Vatnajökull ice cap. Vatnajökull ice cap is the largest glacier in Europe. It's about 8,000 square kilometers. So depending on where the snow is going to fall on this ice, ice cap, slowly accumulate, become ice by the compression travel all the way down here, this process can take between 800 to 1,200 years. So that's why this ice is very, very old snowfall. We can, we can be around 1,000 years old. But the lagoon where we're standing right now is actually appeared much more recently because in 1930, the glacier over there, which is today, as I said, seven kilometers from us, was going all the way to the hills behind you. And actually, you couldn't see the lagoon in 1930. 1930 has started to appear when the, when the glacier has started to retreat. And it's retreated quite slowly at the beginning, but today is retreating quite fast. The lagoon, which is 25 square kilometers, is just getting wider and wider with the receding uh, glacier. And the glacier is receding about 100 to 150 meters every year. And that's average number, so it can be one to two kilometers every 10 years. So it's really, really fast. So the, the, just the lagoon is just getting wider and wider and wider and wider and also deeper and deeper. The lagoon will be, the, the shallower part will be close to the bridge where it's connected to the ocean and the deepest part would be on the edge of the glacier over there where you will have 250 meters deep over there. And this number is going to keep increasing because the glacier have been digging up so deeply in the mountain over there that you actually have the lowest point of Iceland which is under the glacier right now which is around 300 meters below sea level. So with the receding of the glacier, the water is just going to keep going in. And, uh, and at the end, when like, this glacier tongue is going to, to disappear, maybe in 60, 70 or 80 years, depending on how fast it's going to continue to shrink, you will, add, uh, instead of having a glacier, you will have a fjord over here. Mm. A funny thing is that if we have the lowest point of Iceland over there, we actually have the highest over there, called Kvanadalsnjökur which is at 2,110 meters high. About the ice and the iceberg, and uh, this piece of ice is actually a perfect example of what's going on here. You see like how transparent it is, it's just like completely clear, and you have few material in it. And the reason for that is because it has been compressed so much into the glacier. At some point into the glacier, you can have one kilometer of ice. The thickness of the glacier can be one kilometer. And what's happening is that all the, all what which was uh, everything which was into the snow have been pushed away from the ice. So that's why you have like very few things into the into the ice. And actually, into this this specific piece of ice, what we can see is that I'm I'm seeing some. I'll uh, show it to you like uh, closer just after I'm, uh, I'm finished. What you can see is like some glitter in the in the ice. And what it is 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 old uh, uh, old air trapped into the ice. And instead of being like round bubbles, like, like uh, it should be in when you, you have like, for example, if you do an ice cube in into your fridge and then you, and you have air into your ice, it will be bubbles like round. But here the compression is so uh, strong that the bubbles have been flattened. And that's why you actually see like a glittering thing here. I'll show it to you a bit, a bit after. So, and the fact that we have a clear ice is actually what will give us the blue color into the icebergs. Because if the ice would be filled with air, you would see only white color into the iceberg. But you will tell me that we also have a, a lot of white colors. So I'm going to explain you how does it work with those, those big pieces of ice over there. So what you see is actually only 10% of it. 90% of those icebergs are actually under the water. They both, both sides are continually melting, but they're melting in two different ways. The part which is outside of the water is actually in contact, is, is in contact with the air. And during the melting process, the air is going to go inside the ice. And that's when the iceberg is actually going to turn white. But this piece of ice, which is floating on the water, is losing a lot of weight by the melting. So it's losing a lot of mass. And at some point, it will lose its balance also on the water. So what it will do is like, it might just tilt or maybe completely roll over. And then what you will have is the, the part of the iceberg which is under the water. And even so it was melting, it was not melting in contact with the air, and you will find this kind of transparent ice. And when you have a huge amount of transparent ice, it means and that's, that's when you will see the, the best blue colors. But since it gets outside of the water, after a while, actually very, very quick, and with a weather like that, it can take a few hours, it will just like turn white again. 
and then until you lose a lot, a lot of water again and then just tilt, brake, roll over, getting blue, getting white, getting blue, etc, etc. So what you see here is just, if, even so it feels like it's a steel landscape, it's just an ever-changing landscape. The shape of the iceberg, the, the, where, the where they are into, into the, the lagoon, because they can drift very, very quickly with the wind. Today you are actually really, really lucky with the weather. We have maybe one or two days like that into, in the months. But uh, it can be like when, when we have uh, a lot of wind, you can have like a completely empty lagoon this side. Everything, everything is one side of the lagoon, the next day something else. Depending on how much calving we'll get, we'll get more or less ice and, and so on and so on. So as I say, what makes this, this place so unique is that it's ever changing, it's always changing and to, every day I see something different. Uh, another thing about the, the colors, you may have noticed the black color into the icebergs and actually it's two things, most of it is what we call moraine. The moraine, what the glacier on its way down from the mountain is going to erode from the mountain. It's going to take material because it's a huge mass, huge force, it's just like carving the mountain. So it's going to take rocks, sand, dirt, dust, everything. So that, that would be the most of the black color. But it can actually be something else here in Iceland. It can be it can be ash from the volcanoes. When we have an eruption like in 2010, Eyjafjallajökull has produced a huge amount of ash. That's why it blocked the air, air space in Europe for one or two weeks. And the ash here in Iceland is just dropping everywhere on the country. You have a layer of ash everywhere. Also on the glacier over there. In 2010, the glacier over there was black of ash. And what's happening next is that at the next snowfall, the layer of black ash would be trapped into the glacier. So sometimes you can have some black stripe who would match a certain eruption. And last thing I want you to know about this place is actually about a, a small bird, which is quite extraordinary. It's called the Arctic Tern. We have a lot of them nesting right next to the parking. They fishing where the they fishing next to the bridge where the water comes in and out of the lagoon, and this bird is actually the bird with all the longest migration in the world. Is uh, nesting in the northern uh, sorry northern hemisphere, and when it's done nesting, the little one will be ready to fly maybe in three weeks from now. All the colony will go south to Antarctica and come back here next year, and they don't go straight. That would be way too easy. They're actually doing an S shape because they're avoiding the strongest wind. So they can do between 70 to 90,000 kilometers a year. And this little bird, which is not bigger than 30 centimeters with, with the winds, would actually be able to live about 30 years. So it's estimated that this bird does 2.5 million kilometers in this lifetime. So when you see the size of this bird, and actually this quite quite beautiful bird, it's very elegant, and you you, uh, you see that it's uh, shaped to do to be efficient in its flight. It's very sharp in in its shape. It's very beautiful, and actually just to have fun with the numbers, uh, the distance Earth Moon is only 390,000 kilometers. So this little bird in this lifetime is actually doing several returns to the Moon and Earth. So yeah, it's is quite impressive. Just be careful since he's nesting right on the ground. He's quite protective for his little one, so if you get too close, he might get a bit aggressive. All right, so I'm, uh, I'm done here. That's all I wanted to, you to know, but do you have any questions, something that uh, I didn't mention? Something you're wondering? Nope? Nope, okay, so, yeah, no? Okay. So what I'm going to do is that, uh, oh, I'm going to show you what I uh, was uh, talking about, the glittering into the ice. And after that, I'm going to break the ice in smaller pieces if you want to have a taste of 1,000 years old ice. So here you see those glitter here. You, see, you can see the profile of it is really, really flat. And this is very ancient air trapped in it. Oh, do you see? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to show to everyone. Here you can see the profile is flat. And when I turn it like that, you can see like glitter. Oh, everyone. And actually that's what, uh, when the glaciologists are drilling into a glacier, looking for ancient air to analyze that, because this air is trapped, for example, maybe for 800 or 1000 years, years from now, so they're analyzing the, the atmosphere back then. So that's what they're looking for when they're drilling into, into the glacier. Yeah. It's a very nice piece. Right. Wow. 
Oh, cool. Oh, yeah, no, it's, it's getting warm, but it's cold. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm going to break it in smaller pieces. 